welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Heather Lindsay, and today I'm going to be talking all about how did I know my husband was the one. I get so many questions and inboxes and DMs about this very question, so I figured I would do a YouTube video about it to kind of just share my story and share how I knew that my husband was the one. First and foremost, I want you to know that who you accept a ring from, ladies, is one of the most important decisions that you make outside of making Jesus Lord of your life. I mean, think about it. Who are you yoking yourself together with for the rest of your life? Like, this isn't something you should take lightly. This isn't something if it's like, you know, he loves me today, but tomorrow he doesn't. No, okay, then he got, he got to go because it's confusing. Because if I go and I get under the mission and I submit to you and I'm supposed to be doing life with you, but like you're unsure about me, like you don't force nobody to try to like marry you. Ladies, so if you're in a relationship with somebody right now and you are forcing it and you are pushing it and you're trying to convince him to be with you and, and accept you and like you and value you, honey, Goodbye. It don't take all that. I believe that when it's God, then it's two people coming together with a mission to bring glory to God here on this earth. Anything outside of that is a distraction. Now, you might be in a marriage right now watching this and thinking, well, I'm in a distracting marriage. Well, you know what? You're going to have to put more work and effort in and pass more tests because you, you rushed ahead of the Lord. Does this mean that God can't use you? Of course not. God uses whoever is willing. Now, for those of you that are single, those of you that are engaged or in a courtship, I want you to know that there's no just one person for you here on this earth. I don't believe it. I don't believe that there's just one. I believe that you could marry anybody you want to. The Bible, the Bible, I mean, God gives us free will. Does he not give us free will to do it? He gives us free will to choose him or choose the devil. What makes you think he's going to force you to marry somebody that you don't like? I remember when I was like really young, probably maybe like 14, 15 years old. I didn't know any, uh, well, actually, no, I hadn't got saved yet. So I remember when I got saved, I felt like I was gonna be forced to marry somebody that I did not like, that I was not attracted to. And I realized that that was a lie from the pit of hell. Like, no, I don't have to marry somebody that I'm not attracted to, that, that I don't like. So fast forward, I begin to court or date different men. And I share the difference between courtship and dating. Dating is worldly. I mean, you do what you do. You have sex outside of marriage. All that's no accountability. When you're courting, it's like you're, you have the protection of, I believe, the Lord, um, accountability. Um, there's no physical really touch before marriage, no physical, you know, sex, anything like that. So anyways, those are the differences. And when I started to like, you know, date different people, because I was trying to figure out what I wanted in a man. But then I realized when I was single that, you know what? I don't need to get my heart broken like all these times to figure out what I want in a man. Instead, I'm going to trust God that he's going to bring that person in the right time and the right season. I got tired of getting rejected. I got tired of getting hurt. I'm tired of being in relationships that push me away from God. So I would meet a lot of guys, and especially when I went to the Lord and I said, God, I'm done. I'm done dating. I'm done courting. I'm done everything. I just want you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I felt like I felt like there was like this big ringing noise went out and, and notified everybody. So I had all these guys, I felt like trying to talk to me. And it was a it was a distraction for me because I know some people say that, you know, no guy talks to me. I wish I had that problem. Honey, you don't wish that you had that problem because God has you hidden. And I found that I kept on trying to uncover myself and be seen. But all these guys are trying to talk to me, trying to talk to me. And I realized, you know what? I need to not pursue these relationships because I will mess up your life. I am working on some stuff and the last thing I need to do is jump into a relationship with somebody. I needed to know that my identity was in Christ and Christ alone. I needed to know that Jesus was all I really needed. I didn't need a man, I didn't need a job, I didn't need some money, I didn't need a designer bag. I needed Jesus Christ. I needed to be so content and so whole in him. He was all I truly needed. And I came to that point where I'm like, Jesus, you're all I need. I don't need to jump into another relationship. So even though good Christian men came to approach me and they looked great on Christian paper, I knew it wasn't God because it wasn't God's timing. So fast forward um, I the, to the day I met my husband. We walked by each other for about three years straight at church. And I had turned down a lot of guys prior to him because I was just, I wanted to be was really focused on the Lord. I wasn't really interested in anything. And I knew that at the right time, God was going to make a presentation to me. So um, I remember 
our first conversation, I knew within 15 minutes that me and my husband were going to get married immediately. But I did not want to rush ahead of myself because I'd rushed ahead of myself before in the past. But I knew that I knew that Cornelius was different. I knew he wasn't like anybody else, and I didn't want to rush it. So I said, I'm going to take it slow, and we're going to see. So that was our first conversation was Sunday. Our first date was on Wednesday. And on our very first date, he said to me, Heather, I'm not going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wait to kiss you until our wedding day. And I'm like, yo, this is something I prayed for. I asked God for it. That he, and he didn't know about this, but I asked God for this back in 2004. Like, how did, how did he know about my, my prayers that I had? But God told him to do that. And I believe it was just God just, it was another sign to me, like, man, this is it. So I continued, and I want to read something to you real quick. Because I think it's important that we recognize that if we're going to look at a relationship, if we're gonna if we're gonna pursue a relationship, I want you to look at that person's patterns. I checked out Cornelius's patterns. So, did he was he that person? And think about your own relationship. Is he that guy that he can't never keep a job? He always complaining about everybody else. It's the white man. It's all these other people that's holding me back. I ain't got. I don't have nothing. I mean, it's just. It's, it's this person's fault that I got fired. It's this person's fault. I mean, he can't keep a job for nothing. He's inconsistent. He starts, he joins a ministry at church, and then he, he, don't, he, don't, he doesn't go to any of the meetings, none of the Bible studies, nothing. Very inconsistent. Um, just look at his life. Look at the patterns. Look at his friendships. Look at his relationships. I checked out my now husband's patterns to say, you know what? My, you're, without me, outside of me, your patterns are great looks great. You've been at your job for four years. You've been consistent. You've been serving as on to the Lord. You were president of your class for multiple years. You're a leader um, in everything that you do. You always join organizations and you end up leading them. So I would check out his fruit and his life. And I'd be like, wow, you're a leader. You're always, you're innovative. He would start organizations. He, he would always do these different things. And he not only started these things, but he stuck with them. So for me, I'm starting to check them out. Like, you know what? You got some really good patterns. So I think the first thing that I noticed, number one, was he loves Jesus. And that's how I knew he was. I mean, not that's not the only reason I, how I knew. Because we have to know that that's got to be like number one, y'all. Like number one, okay, this is a deal breaker. If you don't know Jesus, like we ain't going to work. I knew he loved Jesus. And, and another thing was I was attracted to him. But another thing was, again, the patterns. He had good fruit. Some of y'all are ignoring the fruit. I mean, this fruit is right in front of your face. He likes all these girls' photos on Instagram. And it shows up on the feed because it shows. Because whoever you're friends with can see what photos that you're liking. So he's liking all these girls' photos. I mean, butt shots. Y'all go to eat. And he's eyeing every girl that walks by. I mean, he's looking at everybody. I mean, and when he's around you, he's lustful. He's lusting you and he's lusting after everything. And what you don't realize is that lust cannot be quenched by a wedding ring or by an event. He will never be just satisfied with you. And then when you get married to him, you find out that he's sleeping with other people or having emotional affairs at, at his job. Then you're surprised. Like, I didn't see this coming. Now, adultery is wrong. It is wrong, and I, it's so wrong. But I think we, adultery doesn't just happen overnight. There's patterns that are in a person's life before this just shows up. I like um, Matthew 12 and 33. A tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, the fruit will be bad. A tree is identified by its fruit. I checked out the fruit of my husband my now husband. And I said, okay, let me check out your fruit to see if I can, you know, in Ephesians 5, it says, submit one to another. Wives, submit to your husband is on to the Lord. Husbands, love your wife like Christ loves the church. And, and husbands, submit to, to Jesus. So for me, I'm like, I need to check out your fruit to see if I, if it's rotten, to see if I can get under the mission, to see if I can respect you, to see if I can honor you, to see if I can serve you the rest of my life because marriage is ministry and ministry means servanthood. So can I serve and get under the mission of this man for the rest of my life? How can I do that if I don't believe in him? Do you even believe in him? Like some of y'all are in relationships right now and you know for a fact you don't believe in him, you don't respect him, you don't even care. Y'all just keep having sex. Everybody's trying to fill voids. Everybody's making everybody an idol and you're trying to force it because you want to have relationship goals. I want relationship goals, Heather. No, no, honey. 
first goal that we must have as believers is a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the type of relationship goals I'm trying to have. You know what I'm saying? So I knew my husband, again, was saved. I was attracted to him. Um, he had great patterns. Number four, he had great fruit. I saw great fruit in his life. When we were courting, when he said, I'm not going to kiss you until our wedding day, he actually kept that. I mean, there was no kiss on the cheek, no kiss on the hand, no rubbing, no touching. We had great, we had boundaries that were up. I couldn't go to his house at a certain time. He couldn't go to my house at a certain time. Um, there was no cuddling. We did not cuddle our whole relationship. That was a year and eight months of no cuddling. Um, so I began to see that not only does he say he going to do something, but he actually do, does it. So for me, that was important because it's important to me. Why would I get in a relationship with somebody as a single and you say you're going to do something, but you never do it. Or you say God is telling you to do something, but you constantly ignore him. And that tells me that you're not interested in being obedient to God, which means that your life is going to reflect that. And if I marry you, my life is going to reflect that because you're not interested whatsoever. And it's going to be this, this like donkey pulling or this ox pulling the donkey and we're going to be unequally yoked. So again, that was another thing to me that kind of just stood out um, that he was actually, he said he was going to do something and he did it. And that meant a lot to me. Um, another thing, how I knew he was the one, our purposes aligned. One of the very first things we talked about when I met him, I was like, what has God called you to do? I need to know because I need to see if you need a helper. Why you need a helper if he ain't doing nothing? And a lot of, a lot of ladies, some of these men, you need to ask them, what is your purpose? What is your vision? What has God called you to do? I mean, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be like a rapper. You know, I'm going to be a rapper this week, but next week I'm going to own a construction company. And the week after, I'm going to be a doctor. The week after, you're going to be a lawyer too. Well, I mean, well, well, where are we going? Because if one day we're going over here, then we're going over here, then I'm confused because I don't know where we're going. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to submit. I'm trying to get on the mission, but I don't know where we're going because we don't have direction because you're not sure of what God has called you to do. Now, this, again, this is not to beat up anybody that's in a relationship like that or a marriage like that, but I'm trying to capture those that are engaged, that are single, that are feeling like you have to force it and force something to make it happen. I believe that there's a knowing that the Holy Spirit will show you who is God's best for you. And God only shows you somebody that doesn't fit your today, but he also can grow with you with what God has called you to do. My husband has fits my tomorrow and the next day and the next year after that. We continue to grow together. Like our ministry is just growing and expanding. And I mean, he's got amazing ideas. It's like we eliminate each other's weaknesses. And that's what makes you a power couple. A power couple is a power or two people that are obedient to God and they become one flesh and they just want to do whatever God wants them to do here on this earth. And then another reason how I knew that he was going to be the one is, um, I mean, he said he loved children. He said that even if I had a child, he would have, he would have taken the child right in and, and, and married me. And, you know, we would have been a family like he wants to adopt. And I want to adopt because I'm adopted. So I just, I think communi communication is key. Talk to that person. Talk to that person you're interested in a relationship with. You should, know, this thing, if, I didn't have like checks in my spirit to the point where it was like run. I know when God was telling me to run and he didn't tell me to run from this. He told me to run from other things, but God never told me to leave. And even in those times where we even broke up, I shared in another video where my husband and I broke up for a month or two when we were just courting, not when we were married, but we were courting. Um, but even then I knew it was God. I knew I was supposed to be in this relationship. So if you're watching this and you're wondering, how am I going to know? First and foremost, the Holy Spirit will teach you and show you all things. If you're trying to force something to happen because he looks great on the paper, he got the job, the money, great credit, but you got to check in your spirit, then God is trying to warn you from something you cannot see down the road. Don't try to force it. Don't try to make it happen. Don't try to rush ahead of God and then tag scripture to it and say that God's blessing this. No, like, God, do you really expect God to bless your sin? How many times are we running trying to go snatch up somebody else's husband, talking about, that's my husband. I'm going to try to break up their marriage. Honey, that's not God. God ain't going to send you somebody else's man. Stop that. You don't want to plant those seeds. So if you want to know, you know, if the guy you're dating, the guy you're courting is the one, um, check out his fruit. Check it out. It's important. It's vital. I'm telling you, 
when you get married, you're going, I believe that, I believe that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And when you get married, the enemy is coming to destroy your marriage. So if you can set your marriage up as, as positive as possible with things like your husband having the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of him, leading him, you respecting him, you having these things in line, you can fight so much better. I'm not saying you can't fight without those things, but what I'm saying is don't force it. Don't try to make it happen and try to force this relationship. The worst thing you can do is walk down the aisle and have a check in your heart and your spirit and know that this person is not the one. I remember my wedding day. I was sitting in my bridal suite and I was with my mom and I'm just like, I've never kissed this man. I'm about to kiss him for the first time. I love him so much, but I don't know him physically. Never saw him without clothes. He's never saw me without clothes. And I felt precious. I felt honored. I felt safe. I felt like, I don't know, I just felt like, I felt like God was covering me. You know what I mean? Like I felt so safe and I felt so respected and honored. And it's not like I was a virgin before that. But you know what? I was, I'm born again virgin. And so I felt so precious. And so as I walked down that aisle, in my head, it wasn't like, oh God, this is not you. Run. Instead, it was like, I... God, you're so faithful. You're so good. I feel so safe. I feel protected. I, I feel like you have a plan and a calling on my life. And I'm so excited about becoming one flesh with Cornelius. And I mean, my mindset was there. Remember that when we think about you know who we're gonna marry, think about your future generations after you that are gonna be affected by the decisions that you decide to make. It's not just you choosing your spouse. It's your children as well. If you don't have kids, think about your future children. Do you want to have that man as their father? If he don't text you, don't call you, sleeps around with all these other girls, cusses his face off, has no standards, no nothing, your child is going to see that example in daddy. And it's like, is that the type of person you want around your child? Now, I mean, I'm adopted. I was given up for adoption. So I want you to know that God can use any child regardless of the of their circumstances, but hey, if you can do something to make life a little easier for your next generation to come into the earth, hey, then I'm here for it. So I encourage you, don't awaken love before it's time. Just rest in God, just trust him. And then when that time does come around, he will show you. So even if he does show you, then check out the fruit afterward. Because there was other guys that I told I wanted to wait to kiss and it didn't happen <laughs> at all. And it, I just felt, I just felt so respected and so loved to actually meet somebody in, and at the time it was 2009. And it's crazy because back then everybody told me, Heather, you're never going to meet anybody like that. It is impossible, Heather, to meet a man that won't kiss you and to meet somebody that does that. Then I realized that, you know what? I was limiting God in my own mindset because of what other people were saying. God can do the impossible. And literally he did for me. And I know he can do it for you too. So encourage you just to rest. Don't run ahead of God and enjoy whatever season he's placed you in. And if you know that person is God, regardless of the hard times, because you're going to have hard times, know that my courtship and engagement was not like pretty roses. Like I cried a lot <laughs> because he, my husband, my now husband was washing me with the water of the word while we were courting. I'm in the sense where he was going in and showing me different areas of my heart that were just, just, just wicked, you know, and it was hard because he became like a mirror to me. And I didn't want to see my, who I really was. You know what I mean? And, um, and so, although it was hard, I still knew that I was in the will of God for my life. So again, it's not going to be easy, but God will help you along the way. So I pray this helps for anybody who is, um, you know, trying to understand how do I know he's going to be the one. Look at those different things that I mentioned. But more than anything, you be led by the Holy Spirit. Not your age, not if your clock is ticking, um, not if you don't think that anybody else's better is going to come along. No. How can God bring better if you keep filling that spot with a bunch of random people? Amen? Amen. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in and make sure that you subscribe below. See you guys later.